everyone and welcome to Journey with the Kellers. My name is Amanda Keller and today we are in the Keller Kitchen. So today we are going to be making our next bread from the Dolly Parton Dollywood Cookbook. Today's recipe is no need rolls. And no, it doesn't mean you don't need them. It means you don't have to need them. <laughs> Kidding. Okay. All right. So the only thing you really need for this for prep work wise is you are going to need a half a cup of warm water. Doesn't need to be hot, just warm. And then uh, the only other thing that you can do if you want is you're just gonna need a little bit of butter softened and that'll be for greasing the bowl. I am actually just gonna use spray oil because that's what I've always used. So, all right, so the first thing that we are going to do is you are going to dissolve um, one packet of active dry yeast, or it just says actually a package of yeast. Um, but this book was made in 1989, so I don't know how many yeast were available back then. Um, but I'm going to use one package of active dry yeast and put it in a half a cup of warm water. Okay, and you're just going to mix that up. Okay. And I'm doing this in the measuring cup because I actually like to do it more in a smaller container because the yeast kind of tends to stick to the edge of the walls. It's a lot easier in a smaller container to get that out, okay? You can go ahead and put it in your bowl once you're done. Or if you wanna do it in the bowl, you can do it in the bowl. Dump your half a cup of warm water in the bowl and then put your packet of yeast in it. That's up to you, okay? So we've got that nice and in there. I wanna make sure I get all the yeast out of here. Bad thing about using another container though, the yeast likes to stay behind, okay. Cons and pluses to both. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna set that to the side. So once you've got that in there, you're gonna stir in your flour, which you are gonna need five cups of self-rising flour. Okay, so I'm gonna take my ring off because I know I'm gonna have to do some of this by hand. We can start out with a fork to get it going and then uh, probably have to do the rest by hand. Okay, so we have one, of self-rising flour. Two cups. Three cups. Four cups. And All right, so you're gonna go ahead and mix this in. Like I said, I'm probably gonna have to use my hands because I'm sure that this will get kind of hard to do it with a fork. But you can kind of fold it into the yeast and water there. Actually, maybe not, because we're not to the point yet where it's gonna make really doughy yet. Right now, it's probably just gonna be a little bit chunky. So we might be able to just keep using the fork, okay? Okay, then you're also going to add in your sugar. So you are going to need a fourth of a cup of sugar. This is right here. Okay. Fourth of a cup. Get that all nice and mixed in. sure we get it off of the bottom because you probably made like a sticky mess down there. All right, so once you get your flour and your sugar mixed in, you kind of just have like this lumpy looking flour mixture, okay? All right. All right, so once all that is mixed together, you're gonna go ahead and let's see. Oh, you're going to put in your shortening. Um, which you will need, where's my spatula? Oh, here it is. Okay, so for the shortening, you need a half a cup of shortening. And I just usually use a spatula to get this out and then just shove it into the cup. Try to, you know, spread it out and get it all in there. Almost there. Okay. 
Now, you're going to cut this into the flour. If you have an actual cutter, that'll work perfectly fine. Um, I don't have one. You can use two knives and kind of take them, like butter knives, not knife knives, but two knives and kind of cross them and do this. I usually just use a fork, kind of smash it in there, and then make sure I press it down in throughout the entire mixture, okay? Oh my gosh, you guys, we weren't supposed to add the yeast water until now. Uh-oh. So just so you know, don't add your yeast water first. Leave that in whatever you're dissolving it in. So don't put it into the large bowl. Put it in a cup or something and dissolve it in the cup and set it aside and do your flour and sugar. But that's okay. We'll just hope it turns out okay. I'm not going to worry about it too much. All right, then you're going to put in your yeast water and one cup of water. Okay, of cold water. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and mix this up. And this is where we're gonna probably have to use our hands to get it nice and mixed up, okay? So we kind of do like the fold and smash, that's what I call it. I fold it and I smash it in. Try to make sure I'm picking up all the loose flour. Now, I'm sure you can do this in a stand mixer if you have one that handles bread doughs really well. I know some of them do not. I have a one that does not. Um, I have another one that does, but lately, I just haven't felt like having to do the extra dishes. So I've just been using one bowl if I can. Keep going here and it says you're going to uh, mix this up until um, you get elastic strands forming which we're starting to get you can kind of see how it's kind of stringy okay let me get the rest of the flour and stuff mixed in though so technically for me this is a kneading because I have to knead it to get it all mixed up but you don't have to knead it for like 10 or 20 minutes. You're just kneading it to get your flour all mixed in there. Okay. All right, you guys. So we got that nice and mixed in. Looking good. feel a couple pieces that don't quite feel right so we'll get those mixed in there we go okay so now we've got the nice handy dandy dough i am going to reuse this bowl if you would like to get a clean bowl and butter it um you can do that get this off my fingers but i am just going to this is the second time i've done that today I am just going to spray this down really good with spray oil. Put this in there. Okay. And now you're going to cover this and refrigerate it for until you're ready to use it. So it can be stored for up to a week. So this is something that you can make ahead of time and then just have it in your fridge and ready for when you want to make your rolls okay so i'm going to go ahead and put a lid on this and stick it in the fridge and i will be back later today to show you guys how to do the actual rolls and get them rised and cooked so i do think uh yeah these do have to rise once you roll them out and stuff for about an hour and a half so there's still some rising to be done okay you guys so i will be back um when i'm ready to make these and uh, we'll go from there be back in a little bit okay you guys so we are back i have actually kept this dough in the refrigerator for like two days because i had a whole bunch of other stuff going on so i wasn't making them so thankfully they can be in there for up to a week 
Okay, so here's what we're gonna do for the last part to get these cooked up. So you are gonna sprinkle your work surface with some flour. Bring your dip out, okay? Now, it's still a little bit cold, so it's probably gonna be a little bit hard, but that's okay, okay? We're gonna sprinkle some on there. You don't really want it to get too warm because then it'll start rising on you, which would not be good. Okay, so you are gonna roll this out to about a half of an inch thick. Like I said, if you're doing this cold, it might be a little bit harder than normal just because it's super cold, but that's okay. Okay. All right, make sure we got some in the middle, flip it. Always remember when you're rolling stuff out to flip it in several different directions if you can as you're rolling it out. some extra pressure down guys Ugh. okay well I'm gonna keep working on this and then I will be back because this is taking long so I'll be right back. Hey, you guys so I finally got it rolled out okay so it's about a half an inch thick I think I think that's pretty close all right so now what you're gonna do is you're going to use a biscuit cutter if you don't have a biscuit cutter that's that's fine just find something circular that you could cut it out with okay all right, and what you're going to do is you're going to cut out each, you're just going to cut oh, with a biscuit cutter, okay? And then what you're going to do with this is you are going to, let's see, so roll it to half inch, uh, cut with a biscuit, oh, you're going to shape it into a ball. Not really sure why we had to do all that, but okay. So, you're going to shape this into a ball here. And then you're gonna place them on a pan. It says a grease pan. I am just using parchment paper. Um, just that's pretty much like using a grease pan. Okay, so once you get them all cut out and you've made all your biscuits, which don't forget, once you cut out your first set, you can smash this all together, re-roll it out and cut out some more, okay? So once you get them all cut out and you get them into balls and you put them on your pan, this is not staying together right there. I don't like how that looks. Um, you're going to go ahead and uh, get a damp cloth, um, like a, doll, a damp kitchen towel, now damp, not wet, um, and then put it over top of them. You're going to cover them and let them rise for about an hour and a half, okay? Once they have rise, um, and they should double in size, so once they have rise, um, you're going to go ahead and bake them at 450 degrees for about 15 minutes, and then you can brush with butter and uh, then let them cool, okay? So I am gonna go ahead and finish cutting these out, get them into balls, then I will cover them with my damp cloth, uh, and then I will cook them at 450 degrees once they've doubled in size after about an hour and a half, and we'll cook them for 15 minutes, and then I'll probably just melt some butter right before that and just kind of slather some butter on top of them, okay? All right, you guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I will come back once these are finished, um, and just so you know, it does say that once you pull them out of the refrigerator, you do need about two hours before you're going to cook them because of getting them prepped and then getting them to rise. So just make sure you know that. So I'll be back as soon as these are done and we'll see how they turned out. So I'll be back. In a okay, you guys. So we are back and look at these turned out pretty good. Mmm, don't those look delicious. I will say though, for no need rules, I feel like I still needed them at least somewhat in a way, okay? So um, I did make two pans. So there's another pan over there on the oven and I did put some butter on top of them. I'm trying to, you can kind of see it. Maybe, I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but you can kind of see it on there, okay? Uh, so my bottom's got a little bit done. I will tell you that it did not take 15 minutes at 450 degrees. Um, I would say maybe shoot for 10 and then check them and see how they are because yeah mine got a little overdone as you can see but that's okay the tops look really good so that's all that matters we can just not eat that bottom part if we don't want to okay all right you guys so let's go ahead and i'll just try this little tiny guy here so let's go ahead and split it Ooh, does look good on the inside look at that steam coming off of there so that looks really good and this one's not quite as burnt so it's okay all right you guys so let's Give these a try. See how they taste. Mmm. Mmm. 
that really is good, but I will say, this almost does taste more like a biscuit than a dinner roll. So it's kind of a biscuity dinner roll. You know how dinner rolls are usually pretty moist and almost, almost cake-like, but without sugar. And then biscuits are a little bit more, have a little bit more girth to them. This kind of feels more like a biscuit, but it's delicious, so it works. Okay, you guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Like and subscribe if you like, or don't if you don't. Everyone have a good day. Enjoy your cooking. Keep your kitchen messy, and we'll see you later. Bye.